After a two-month summer break, the Powerboat P1 teams have headed to the Iberian Peninsula for the final two Grand Prix of the year, which will decide the 2008 Powerboat P1 World Championships. Portimao in Portugal in two weeks' time, and this weekend, the Vigo Grand Prix of the Sea from Spain. Of course, when most people think of the Spanish seaside, they think of the cost of this or the cost of that down on the Mediterranean Sea. But Vigo is Spain's gateway to the Atlantic Ocean, right up in the northwest of the country, and it's surrounded by spectacular coves and sandy beaches. Situated in the estuary of the Ria de Vigo, it's the natural site for a harbour. And Vigo has grown to be the largest fishing port in Europe, as well as one of Spain's leading industrial regions. With the Peugeot Citroën plant nearby, building over half a million cars a year, of which 80% are exported around the world. But right now, all eyes in Vigo are turned towards the glamour and spectacle that's just arrived in town. And I don't mean the Queen Mary 2. Cruise liners are one thing, but 100 mile an hour plus powerboats are quite another. Chris Shaw brings us up to date with how the championship contenders stand. It's turned out to be a thrilling championship chase this year in the Evolution class. They've been collisions, missed turns, breakdowns, and plenty of other dramas. Honeyparty.com and Lucas Oil have both been highly competitive, but have just had too many problems getting to the finish line. Pignolo 53 have had mixed fortunes too, including literally flying in Malta. GFN Gibellato have been pushing hard and finally got their first win of the year in Tunisia. They still have a shot at the title. Keaton Out and Limits have been on a learning curve with the new boat and getting the best from it, but the highlight so far has been two wins in Malta. Fountain Worldwide, first for boats, won the first four races of the year before luck turned against them. But despite a few problems, they've only had one non-point score. A protest against them from the first round has recently been overturned and they're now sitting on a good points haul. UIM uh, went through it, uh, gave us our points back, we're really happy and now we're, we're back to where we should be. Um, we've got a 220 point lead, it's, uh, it's a big lead but it's still something that uh, we've got to take care of uh, this weekend. And 640 points is a good score, but it isn't enough yet for Fountain Worldwide to seal the championship, but they just could do that in Spain. Supersport has seen some new challenges to the championship title, but being able to mount a strong and consistent challenge has eluded many. Saho have had the speed many times, but mechanical problems have let them down. And it's been the same woes for Silverline Bootsy Bullet, who really should have had more podiums. By a high performance have been improving steadily with some good point scores, but a bad round in Tunisia set them back. Microlink PC have raced very hard all season, taking one win and have been on the podium at every event, but their races at times have been highly dramatic. But again, no one has been able to match the dominance of Konum Yachts. There's only one race that they haven't won this year, spoiling a perfect run. The others have been closing the gaps in the races, but as long as Conan keeps scoring points, they really can't miss out on that second successive title. For Supersports contenders, Vigo sees the arrival of yet another new manufacturer keen to show off their products in the ever-growing world of Powerboat P1. Chris Shaw has the story. Listed as a wildcard entry for the next two rounds of Team Conrad. This is a brand new project and one that's come from being inspired by a Powerboat P1 race last year. 12 months ago there was nothing. There was no boat, there was no truck, there was not even a team. But uh, I'd been to a P1 race at, uh, at Cowes and uh, was absolutely hooked on the whole event. 
After a wild ride in Tunisia, throttle man Andreas Hakiopoulos has had to step out of the Phoenix 8 boat to help mend an injured back, which has given the opportunity for fast lady Sarah Donahue to step on board alongside the ever enthusiastic Chinaman Martin Lai. Sarah Donahue is not a new face at all in the Super Sport class and has been navigated in the big Sergio. But a chance to join Phoenix TV is a big step up as she'll be driving. Here it's great because I'm in a driving position, which is what I do. And me and Martin work really well together as a team. We've already um, found that out with the short period of time we've spent on the water. Um, and it's nice that the boat goes a little bit faster as well. That's more, more my cup of tea. Um, so I'm, I'm really looking forward to it. When it came to the Super Sports power pole, it was the championship leaders, Konam Yacht, who were fastest yet again. The big surprise was that second fastest were the new boys, Team Conrad. Unfortunately, being new boys, they've got to start their first race 20 seconds behind the pack. A pack which is right now heading out towards the start line, so we must join our race commentator, Martin Sanborn. Thank you, Tiff, and let's take a look at the race course for the Grand Prix of the Sea Sprint Race here in Vigo. It is a 5.67 mile lap. They're gonna do eight laps plus the start lap. Clockwise rotation, seven turns. As we go on board, Michael Link and Conum, as they get all lined up as they did based on their power pole positions. And we have a green flag and the boats are underway. Off to an early jump is by a high performance. What a great start they got. On board by a high performance. So right now we've got by a high performance, followed by Microlink PC and then Conum Yachts. And Conum Yachts is now challenging Microlink PC Voom Voom Hustler. They're on the inside, closing in on the rooster tail of by a high performance. Baya has found some speed today, and Conum Yachts looks like they're driving by Microlink PC. They've got a little bit of boat speed. This boat is always so fast, and they are in contention to wrap up the championship here in the first race in the Vigo Grand Prix of the Sea. Conum Yachts being chased now by the big Sergio as they make their way around the turn. Going way wide to the outside is Microlink PC, but still continuing to lead is by a high performance. Conum Yachts getting a little bumpy as they lost a little bit of ground to Microlink PC. Let's take a look at our virtual spectators. We see by a high performance drive away from Microlink PC at the start. They definitely got a great jump. As we circle back around, we see Conum Yachts running in second place side by side with Voom Voom Hustler Microlink as they all make their way towards the first turn. Back on board by a high performance, well out in the lead right now. Definitely have this boat dialed in. By a high performance, a Donzi, 39-foot Donzi. Second place right now is Microlink PC, followed by Conum Yachts. But look at the battle right now between Spirit of Port Tommaso and Tulio Abate. Conum Yachts moving up on Voom Voom Hustler. Microlink PC, oh, Voom Voom Hustler has a problem. They pull off the race course. Voom Voom Hustler running so strong as we look at our leader by a high performance. Well out in the lead right now. Second place now is Conum Yachts. Let's take a look and see what happened as Microlink PC Voom Voom Hustler. He puts up his hand. He's getting ready to pull off the race course. They've got a problem. And now in third place, the big Sergio. This is the best position they've had all year in the Powerboat P1 Super Sport Series, running fantastically now in third place. On board and over the top of Conum Yachts in their beautiful Chagrin. This boat has proven to be unbeatable all year long, but currently they're running in second place. Well, I'm with a very disappointed V. Ganjavian, who is sort of one blade short on his propeller. V, how do these things happen? Uh, I think it's just fatigue. Um, I don't know what it is. This is the third one now uh, this season. 
How much is each of these props to buy? <laughs> don't really want to know. <laughs> um, I think they're about um, four and a half thousand dollars each. Well, that explains what happened to Microlink PC, and here we have the battle shaping up right now with Redline Conrad challenging Spirit of Port Tommaso to move into fourth position. This boat is a very fast boat. Remember, they had to start 20 seconds behind because technically they're a rookie team. They're running as a wild card, but expect to see big things out of them next year. Back with Big Sergio, currently running in third position. And now we have a three-ray battle with Tulio Abate, Conrad Redline, and Spirit of Port Tommaso. This time, Conrad has moved to the outside, trying to get up alongside Tulio Abate. Spirit of Port Tommaso right between the two of them. Conrad Redline getting ahead of Tulio Abate. This is a 39-foot velocity. Probably one of the fastest conventional V-bottoms out there and look forward to big things from that boat next year. And here we have a problem with Phoenix ATV getting towed in. Their day is done. Back to our battle right now with Conrad and Tulio Abate. Look at these two boats side by side. These are both of the wild card entries here in the Vigo Grand Prix of the Sea. Second and third fastest boats in the power pole. The brand new team from the UK, Conrad Propulsion Systems, Redline Racing. As we go back on board, Conum Yachts. Oh, it looks like Tulio Abate has had a problem pulling off to the inside. Back to our leaders, by a high performance with their navigator looking behind to see the position of the other teams. They've got to watch out for Conum. You see the hand signals lining up as they cross the start finish line. Baia High Performance takes the win. Second place going to Conum Yachts. Let's take a look at the results for the Saturday race here at the Vigo Grand Prix of the Sea. First place going to Baia High Performance. Second place to Conum Yachts. Third place goes to Big Sergio. Fourth place to the wild card Redline Conrad. And fifth place goes to Spirit of Portomasso. A big crowd to see Bayer awarded their medals, but it was to be a short-lived celebration. Unfortunately, the Italians' joy wouldn't last long. Their onboard data recorder showed that they'd exceeded the 85 mile an hour speed limit that set on the open top supersports boats for safety reasons, and they were given a six-minute penalty, which dropped them back to fifth place. Join us after the break, when it's the turn of the Evolution boats to hit the waters off of Vigo. Welcome back to the Atlantic coast of Spain, where the harbour front crowd has just been treated to a thrilling Powerboat P1 super sports race and now await the first Evolution class race of the weekend. Chris Shaw checks out the form book after yesterday's power pole. Honeyparty.com had to miss the second race in Tunisia after a crack appeared in the deck, but they're back in one piece again now. Well, we've structurally reinforced the whole deck right the way through the boat now, so we're fairly confident structurally uh, we're not going to have any problems. There's a crew change in Keaton Alta Limits with the return of Giovanni Carpitella, who raced in P1 last year with Giancarlo Cangiano, and he replaces Joe Scro. Giancarlo called me 15 days ago when I'm in Patagonia for ski and said, Giovanni, quickly, please, coming back, we have to go to race, we have to try to win the, the World Championship. I said, OK, Giancarlo, give me, what, three, four days for organize the travel and then coming back. In a spectacular setting, Powerpole saw four boats under three minutes, ten seconds. Honeyparty.com came fourth, Keaton Outer Limits were third fastest and very close to the time set by the Fantastic One, which again is crewed by Luca Famili Fendi and Matteo Nicolini. 
but by far the fastest was Fountain Worldwide first for boats, lapping at three minutes, two seconds. We thought it was going to be a lot closer than it was, so it was quite a risky lap, not the type of lap we can do for 12 laps today. As the boats head out towards the start line for round nine of the Powerboat T1 Evolution Class World Championship, it's time for us to join our race commentator, Martin Zamborn. Thank you, Tiff, and let's take a look at the Evolution course here, the sprint race here at the Vigo Grand Prix of the Sea. 5.67 miles on the lap. They are going to do nine laps plus the start lap, seven turns, including one left-hander on this race course. The boats are all lined up based on their power pole. This time we have a change on the inside. The fastest boat in the power pole found worldwide first for boats.com. They've got the inside, and we have a green flag. The boats are off and running. Looks like Pignolo got a big jump on the outside, maybe a little bit too much of a jump, but off to an early lead is the fantastic one. That was on board, found worldwide first for boats as we see the boats making their way to the first turn. The fantastic one out in the lead, Keaton Outer Limits almost side by side with Fountain Worldwide, but the fantastic one has a big jump running very well as they move out into the lead, heading towards the first turn. That's Pignolo on the outside. They were a little bit behind because of the angle. The leader is the fantastic one. Second place now, Fountain Worldwide first for boats. Second place, Keaton Outer Limits. Fountain Worldwide has the inside lane. The fantastic one has the boat speed as we go on board Pignolo, and here comes HoneyParty.com. Look at them moving through the pack. They are now charging up alongside Keaton Outer Limits. They are almost four across as they head to the first turn. The fantastic one, Fountain Worldwide first for boats, Keaton Outer Limits, and coming up hard on the outside, HoneyParty.com. Making a big move to the outside as they get past Keaton Outer Limits. Honey Party coming up hard on the outside. They are now alongside the Fantastic One challenging for the lead. Honey Party's got the outside line. The Fantastic One has the inside line. They got the better lane. They got a less distance to go around the race course, but Honey Party carrying the boat speed on the outside. Richard Carr and Mark Pascal as they make their way around the outside. Found Worldwide first for boats on the inside. Oh, they hook it a little bit. Got caught in the rooster tail of the fantastic one. That cost them some distance. Coming around on the outside is HoneyParty.com. That was on board Keaton Outer Limits as we go back to our battle for the lead. On the outside, honeyparty.com. On the inside is the fantastic one. Skater versus Cigarette. Chief Power versus Mercury Power on the inside. The honeyparty.com boat goes wide on the outside. The next two boats to come through, that was Keaton Outer Limits and Fountain Worldwide battling for third and fourth position. And there we see the HoneyParty.com boat pull past the fantastic one. They are now the leaders. HoneyParty.com, all that speed. A very fast boat as they move their way into the lead ahead of the fantastic one. Let's look at our virtual spectator replay as we watch on the outside of the screen, HoneyParty.com challenging the fantastic one on the inside as they pull ahead into the lead. What a great battle. As we look at the race from overhead, the next boat to go through the turn is gonna be Fountain Worldwide first for boats, followed by Keaton Outer Limits as we go on board Fountain Worldwide. They did not give Keaton a lot of room, but they are now challenging the fantastic one. Fountain Worldwide coming up hard on the inside. That is an Ilmore powered naturally aspirated boat coming up against the supercharged mercury powered boat. As they go back through the rooster tail to the outside and they get by. We've got a problem with the fantastic one. They've come off plane to the inside having a problem. On board Lucas Oil, I don't know what happened to the fantastic one. They slowed down dramatically moving to the inside of the race course. That is going to put Fountain Worldwide first for boats in second place. And the Fantastic One has got back up and running again. Whatever the problem was, they got it corrected. They're back up and running in third position. They managed to hold off fourth place, Keaton Outer Limits. Honeyparty.com well out in the lead right now. And the Vigo Grand Prix of the Sea. 
not a hiccup from those chief engines as they make their way around the course. Big advantage to having all that clean water. You can let the boat a little bit more conservative on the trim, carry all kinds of speed. You don't got to worry about traffic. On board Fountain Worldwide, first for boats. Back to our battle right now as Lucas Oil gets ready to put a move on Keaton Outer Limits. Keaton Outer Limits having a problem. Lucas Oil gets by. Looks like Lucas Oil is going to move into fourth position. But the boat of the day is HoneyParty.com well out in the lead right now. Surface drives on this skater. This boat is an identical boat to the Lucas Oil and Pinolo boat as they make their way around the the east end of the race course right now, Lucas Oil on the inside.